After the success of uh, Belle de Jour, commercial success of Belle de Jour, Bunuel was free to do whatever he wanted. And he had told me for a long time, since the very beginning we were working together, about an idea to make a film about heresies of uh, our sacred religion, you know, uh, Christ, uh, Christianism, uh, from the from the historical point of view, theological, etc. This idea of being himself an heretic compared to the uh, classical cinema. There is a book in Spain called Los Heterodojos Españoles, the Spanish Heretics, which he liked very much, he gave me to, to read. And me too, I was extremely interested. I had written already in heresy. But if it was very difficult to present a film to a producer. We want to make a film about Christian uh, heresies. And uh, uh, finally, after the success, uh, we wrote that script. Sid Berman gave her the, the authorization to go to Madrid and Spain and Mexico. We wrote the script. And we gave it to read to Sid Berman in, uh, in Spain, thinking that he would, uh, he would think that we, we, we went crazy, you know. But he liked the script, strangely enough, he laughed. And he said to us, I will make the film as cheap as possible, you know, and uh, the film is not a very expensive film, but absolutely faithful to the script. And uh, this um, promenade, you know, this work of two men going from Paris to Santiago de Compostela uh, to pilgrims was, you know, allowed us from time to time to go from one side of the theoretical uh, Christianity to the other side to describe an heresy, you know. The, an heresy is the choice of a personal, private, and strange truth, which is not the official truth from the dogma, but slightly different, you know. And from that difference, as you, you, you can see today between the sheet and the sunnit, for this difference, you can die or kill. You allowed yourself to kill or die. Which is exactly the same for the Christian that by in the, in the first centuries you know, of our history, exactly like today, between the sheet and the sunnit. You know. I, I uh, heard um, a uh, sunnit leader of Daesh uh, a, a few uh, few months ago, saying, with a normal man, I mean, with a beard, but he if the Shiites refuse to convert themselves to the real religion, we have no other solution than to kill them. Which was exactly the words of St. Augustine, but the same words, exactly. We are obliged to kill the Manichaeans, you know, the Donatists, who are not thinking, thinking the right way. You know, that's a fascinating subject, you know. So, which is eternal. You know, at the, when we made the film, not everybody realized how the film was for all seasons. I would say, you know, today, if you see the film today, it's frightening because it's exactly what you read in the newspapers. You know, exact, but in another time, in another period, with other uh, costumes, you know, uh, habits, words. But it's exactly this particular disposition of our mind the mind of certain, not yours, not mine, right? not to accept the ideas, even uh, the fantasies of somebody else. We have to respect the dogma, you know, the, uh, until the, the smallest little point, you know. And that, uh, that's why the film was a, success, a commercial success, which is unbelievable. You know, and the, the, the film was made uh, 200,000 spectators only in Paris, which was unheard of, you know, was, was such a film. The film was made without any concessions, you know. I, I'm playing a part in it. I'm playing the, the Prisciliano. Prisciliano was a, a Spanish heretic from the 8th century. And uh, just to amuse you, uh, about uh, three years ago, I received a letter from Spain from the association called the friends of Prisciliano, Los Amigos de Prisciliano. 
And uh, since I had played the part of Priscillian in the in the film, and since Priscillian was killed, executed by the dogmatics, they were offering me to be the president of their association, which I immediately accepted, of course. So you are speaking now to the president of uh, uh, the friends of Priscillian. <laughs> Nobody knows what, what it is. Before starting to write uh, um, the Milky Way, I spent alone almost six months of research, doing only that, you know, in books, talking with some Jesuit, talking with some Dominicans, and uh, reading a lot, you know, taking a, a, a pile of notes like that I still have about all the everything. I was so good that I gave uh, uh, I gave a lecture in a seminar. For uh, um, of, of seminarists in Beauvais, or priests, you know, young priests, to tell them about you uh, have to I have to make a how could I say how to classify the heresies, you know, according and heresy is always born from a mystery. A mystery is, for instance, we God is one and three. We have to admit that absurdity that one is three and three is one. You know, we have to admit that's the dogma. There is one God in three persons. That's all, that's all. So you have a ten being a human being, you want to understand, you want to explain. You have a tendency to say, Well, there is one God, only one God. From time to time it takes a different aspect, you know. To the fire. Okay. It's an heresy. Or the opposite. No, in reality, there are three gods, you know, right there, to the fire. You know, that's, that's the, the principle is to start always, we must accept mystery. If it is mysterious, if it is absurd, that means that it comes from God. You know, the, the, the real truth is not from the earth. It's always from another, another, how could I say, another time and space, you know, another dimension, you know. That's quite interesting about you, because the same attitude could be observed about, for instance, painting. You know, it's, uh, you know there are the heretics and the classical and you know, and so on. Every every time there is a dogma, even in the cinema, there was a dogma, the, the, the Danish dogma. They are immediately heretics. The idea of uh, two uh, pilgrims walking from poor. Well, from Paris to Santiago, like two pilgrims, that's typically Spanish. That's typically, you know, the, the, the Romanesque, the Spanish Romanesque. And that, that was uh, the, the real inspiration of the, not of the, uh, the, the, the meaning of the film, but of the form, yes. And uh, also the idea that at the end of, uh, when we were at the Venice Film Festival, by, uh, when, where Belle de Jour won the prize, we went together with Luis, to see uh, Godard, uh, I don't know which Godard it was. There was a film by Godard um, at, at the same film, etc. And we went to see the film, and at the end of the film, Brunel told me, well, if that is the two-day cinema, then we can make our film about heresies. You know? The freedom of Godard and, and uh, inspired me in a way. It was not, there was nothing to do as the subject. It was a film about, I uh, call La Chinoise, yes, the Chinese girl. Mm -hmm. That was the film with Anna Karina. So indirectly, Godard is the, the origin of the Milky Way. Godard never speaks about other directors. You know, he's very. Uh, he's, I like him very much. I mean, it's a man but extremely interesting. But saying uh, from time to time, he, he just. Uh, uh, drops an insult, you know, like uh, to Tarantino in the in the, in the latest the film, Cannes Film Festival. But uh, most of the time he doesn't. Uh, I know that he saw some of the Bunuel films several times, that I know. Uh, I know also that, for instance, he went to see alone twice Cyrano de Bergerac. I, I don't know when. Ask him if you want to know why. You know. But we never talk about uh, the the qualities of the non-qualities of all the directors. Bunuel was extremely interested by Godard, extremely intrigued, you know, 
uh, he was uh, astonished by the audacity, you know, by the of of, of Jean Luc, and that's why going out of the Chinese girl, which is very uh, film, uh, ni tête, as we say in French, you know, uh, it's about uh, the war in Vietnam and at the same time uh, revolution in Paris, uh, long uh, long lines, you know. Uh, that's why uh, that new form of uh, film making was really intriguing him. They met several times, they met, but I, I don't know what uh, they, they said to, to each other. But there are anyway the, the two, uh, probably the two most interesting filmmakers I ever met. I think one of the best decisions I made in my life was not to be a director. Because being a director is a nightmare. You know, first of all, you you have to spend two, two, three, four, sometimes six years, you know, uh, working on the same story. And I'm much more, you know, uh, uh, attracted by different stories, you know, almost uh, every, every day. That's my nature. And uh, I, uh, also, there were many very good directors my generation. I'm exactly the generation of the new wave. I'm exactly the same age as Truffaut would be. And Godard, is, we are the two survivors. Godard is one year uh, older. Don't tell him I told you, but, but, but no, we are very good friends, you know, we work together anyway. So we are the, the two survivors, and yeah, there is no, uh, n n n nothing more. And uh, uh, that's why uh, at the time when the new wave was rejecting the, even the idea of being or working with a screenwriter, a screenwriter was considered, you know, as something miserable, you know, that we don't need the film, it's the film of the director, the screenwriter is nothing. So since on the other side I was attracted to theatre and I was keeping publishing books, you know, I, I, I didn't want to become just, the moment you are a movie director, you have a tag on your shoulder, director, you know, movie director. You can't do anything else. You, uh, Jean Renoir wrote uh, very good books. He was never considered as a writer, never. You are a movie, we are, you, are the, you are the chief, you are the king, but you can't do anything else. And if by misfortune, two or three films that you made in a row didn't work, then you are lost. So I prefer to stay a writer and maybe that's the reason why I'm speak, speaking to you today. You know? We finished the script of the Milky Way uh, in Mexico, January 68. Then I was called by Bilosh Forman to, in my way back to Paris, if I could stop in New York, to try, to try uh, working with Milos on a new story about the hippies, the hippie movement. So I stopped in, uh, in New York in March, April, but it was the time of the killing of Martin Luther King, the riots in Harlem. It was very difficult to live in New York at that time and to work. So we decided, uh, Milos had a film selected at the Cannes Film Festival. We decided to go to Paris and to keep working in Paris. You know what happened in March, in, in, in uh, May '68, the Cannes Film Festival was uh, cancelled. We went back to Paris, and in Paris, Buñuel was already there, because he was waiting to to shoot the Milky Way next summer. So I spent May '68 uh, uh, in Paris with Miloš Forman on one side and Buñuel on the other side. The two of them, coming from from a regime, the communist regime in Czechoslovakia and the Frankist in Spain, you know, and seeing what was going on in Paris, they could not understand. None of them, you know. I remember Milos telling me one day, "But what do you want? You have everything. What what are you looking for? You know, it's it's it was impossible to to understand why the the French students were rioting." We were, and we were, I was not a student. They were rioting against a, a way of living together about a society of consummation, of consume, you know, that 
that the, the, the world was appearing. In a way, it was it was uh, early to 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 protest again, you know. But neither Buñuel nor uh, Milos could understand, you know, from the from a political point of view. But it was extremely interesting for me to be between the two of them. So finally, at the end of May, Milos told me that we we hadn't finished the script. It's impossible to work in Paris. Let's go to the quietest place in the world. Let's go to Prague. So we went to Prague and the Russian tanks arrived. <laughs> so it was a, the year was crazy. You know? So I went back to Paris and the, the film, uh, Mickey, was postponed because we had some more work to do. And it was shot in September, I believe, something like September, October. And Miloš uh, left Czechoslovakia forever. Well, not forever now, he's going back now, but for a long period of time. The year 68 was a crazy year, completely. Because at the end, everybody forgot that in October 68, uh, 500 students were killed in Mexico by the, by the government to prepare quite Olympic Games. 500 students. I mean, a government who, who shoot his youth. How can we understand this? Until today they found new victims of, uh, of this October 68 in Mexico. And to be right, it was horrifying, of course. Every film says, you know, about uh, every book, every painting says about the time it, it, was, it was made, of course. Uh, and uh, some people saw uh, the Milky Way like a film about theories of writing, of painting, you know, you can be an integrist you know, on, on, on painting also, and also an heretic. You know, the, the, every, every time uh, you addict a dogma, you have immediately you have heretics. You know, that's, that's part of the human nature. That's what Bunuel had felt a long time ago when, it, when the youth Young, he, he read this uh, Spanish book I told you about, by Menendez Pelayo. We have to quote this name.